Well, uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Dan Meyer. I'm the editor in chief of RCR Wireless News. Uh, joining me today on this chat is uh, Danielle Coffey, who is a VP of Regulatory Affairs or Government Affairs, I should say, at TIA. Uh, and today we're going to speak a little bit about uh, Spectrum, which is always a hot topic uh, when it comes to uh, the wireless uh, space. Uh, never enough of it, and uh, always in need of more. So, uh, Danielle, thanks so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you taking the time to talk about such an important issue. Yeah, well, indeed. Well, maybe we'll start off with, uh, obviously, uh, with the current administration in place. Uh, there was some talk initially uh, when they came in power uh, four or five years ago now uh, about getting more spectrum into the market. Uh, you know, there was a 700 megahertz spectrum auction uh, several years ago, uh, but it seems from that point there's just been a need for more and more spectrum. Obviously, consumers are are, are demanding more and more services. Uh, carriers are having to try to supply that, and uh, I guess that, that that spectrum crunch term has become quite popular. So I don't know, maybe get from your point of view or from TIA's point of view, kind of where we are when it comes to spectrum, how well the government's done in, in getting more spectrum to market, and maybe some of those, I guess, initial challenges that are, that are coming up uh, to kind of uh, preventing some of those some of those uh, that spectrum coming coming to market? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, it's, it's a hot topic, like yeah. I said, for our members because it's a scarcity issue. And I think that that was identified first when they did the broadband plan. Remember the stimulus bill, and then they had the FCC do the broadband plan, and that's where yeah. the term crisis was originally identified because we did the math and we just realized that there's not enough in the pipeline to have um, to be made available to the carriers to build out the networks that's the wireless broadband networks that's going to um, meet the demand that's growing exponentially every year. Um, so you asked about what are some of the opportunities and what are some of the challenges. Um, the opportunities are obviously I think most um, most readily in front of us and pending uh, at the commission right now is the incentive auctions. I think that that's a tremendous opportunity for our, um, our we're the suppliers and the manufacturers of the network. So once that spectrum becomes available and the carriers bid on that, we'll be able to. Um, I mean, there's you know there's endless possibilities of what we could do with that. Um, the challenges there, even though you know we foresee maybe you know an optimum of 120 megahertz to become available from the voluntary incentive auctions. Yeah. Um, it's unprecedented. It's yeah. never taken place, which is why it needed a congressional act to do it in the first place. Because you know tr proceeds usually go back to the treasury um, yeah. by default. So by going back to the broadcasters, the challenge there is to figure out how much the broadcasters want to be paid for that, and to incentivize them to come to the table in the first place to give it up, to identify what they want to give it up for, and then to be able to do that either simultaneously or in conjunction with what the carriers will then pay for yeah. that spectrum is, I mean, that's a very real challenge. And then the repacking, what you do after that, and reshuffling people so that you have contiguous blocks, um, that's going to be a challenge. And then also the players in the field, there's contention right now, who should get it, who should be excluded potentially. So that's yes, a yes. So those are the challenges I see with the broadcaster. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. those, are, those are presumably going to be free and clear once broadcasters go off. The other piece, the other thing that people are talking about is the spectrum sharing yeah. and using what's already, what's already being used by the federal users. So, you know, there's a few bands um, that I won't go into, but that are being currently being used that would need to be cleared by yeah. the federal users. That's the other piece of it, and those have challenges in and of themselves because they're currently being used. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's pretty much, I think that that's what's on the table. That's what we're dealing with. I obviously gave an incredibly simplified sure, sure. cursory, but but th that's basically, those are the those are the big things they for us right now. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, well, I guess we'll, we'll kind of go in more with the, the incentive auction. I mean, that's that's something that's kind of been uh, on the table now for uh, maybe about, um, about a year or so now. Uh, obviously, a lot of moving parts with that, though. I mean, this is, like you said, unprecedented. I mean, the, the thought of trying to get, uh, broadcasters to give up spectrum has been tricky. Uh, the 700 megahertz auction seemed to show some um, some some leeway there to negotiate on that, um, but perhaps the broadcasters realized that there was a lot of a lot of money to be made there, uh, and so with 600 megahertz obviously uh, coming up now, uh, it does seem like the broadcasters are uh, may, maybe being a little more um, hesitant to to give it up so quickly. Um, and then, like you said, there's all these other moving parts about getting the spectrum in different bands, uh, who can participate. Uh, and then, of course, obviously, the Congress wants to get this stuff auctioned off as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, I think the FCC was hoping for uh, sometime next year, late this year, early next year. Uh, you know, with so many moving pieces on that, 
uh, I, I guess, what's your view on, on, on the chance of that coming to market in a year, two-year time frame right now? Um, I think it's probable, actually. It's definitely possible, but as far as um, as far as what the commission's been doing so far, getting ready, I mean, we do have a transition coming because we yeah. are now been nominated by the committee and not the full Senate yet, but um, but we hope to see that coming soon now with um, Mike O'Reilly also paired with them. And once they are, I think that they have enough to go on because okay. the commission has been so diligent in carrying it up to the point that it's at right now, which seems to have um, taken a lot of shape. The auction design is not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, we've got reverse auction, forward auction, what have you, and the different players and how they'll play and so forth. So I think that there's enough there. They have continued to release orders on how they'll go about it, and people are weighing in, including us. Um, we usually weigh in on the technical feasibility because, again, we build the networks, not necessarily the players and who should get it. We don't really care who gets yeah. it. I mean, we're happy for those who do because then we'll reap the benefits by being able to build out those networks that people need so much. As far as the time frame, um, you know, they seem to be on pace. There was some um, there was some question about whether or not they are recently by some statements. Um, uh, you know, we're hopeful that it happens um, in the time frame that they're expecting. They have till 2015, but they have it timed up, teed up, so it'll happen in 2014. So they have a little bit, little bit of wiggle room, mm -hmm. but even still, um, we foresee that they're pushing very hard to make this deadline, um, and we're hopeful that it sticks. Yeah, I know in the past I've been a bit. Uh, uh, perhaps negative when it comes to these auctions. I'll, I mean, negative in the, in the timing aspect of it. I mean, I'll just say I, I think and, and hope it'll come up, up quickly. But uh, you know, when you get all these different players involved and government involved, and and again, the new administration, you're right with Wheeler coming in too. Uh, that seems to maybe maybe push the fact a little bit. Uh, it seems like some of these things are kind of stacking up. But at, at least it sounds like, from your point of view, you're someone who's probably more intelligent than I am. Obviously, uh, it seems like 2014 is a is a reasonable timeline for this to this to take place. Yes, even um, and most definitely, hopeful, hopefully by the um, by the actual deadline uh, yeah. that was set forth in the act. So. Got it. Got it. No, and I, I know obviously you guys do work on a lot, a lot of the technical aspects of Spectrum and, and kind of the, the the licenses coming out. I mean, are there any challenges you guys are seeing yet with with the banding issues that they're coming out with for for the 600 megahertz spectrum? Has it been coming along pretty well? Do you think there's a consensus yet on how they're going to piece this together? Um. Well. Uh, the repacking effort will take part in where people go, where people will be moved off to is going to be largely determined by who comes up with um, their blocks of spectrum in the first place. I think okay. that there's a lot of talk about how to use different types of technologies in different bands, um, and that's a general conversation. There's a lot of research that's being focused in this area because um, you know, not just this band, not just this um, swath of spectrum that's going to be auctioned off by the broadcasters, but also different um, bands of spectrum. How to use it? What's the most efficient use? Um, like I said before, whether or not sharing can occur yeah. and so forth. I think that people are looking at spectrum as a whole and different technologies and different ways of using that spectrum more efficiently, where it can be globally harmonized. Um, with this particular band they're talking about right now, the H block, and they're talking about how to um, whether or not to do timing timing wise, whether or not to do that before or after. And there's there's a um, there's um, an NPRM I believe that was yeah. just released on that. So so as far as timing, um, you know, the sooner the better. Yeah. Um, and what you can, when you can, is is you know when it makes sense. We're just we're we're ready for any band to come up and ready to build the networks whenever that happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the industry is obviously ready for the spectrum. I mean, anything they can get their hands on is going to be put to use uh, pretty quickly, I'm guessing. I mean, again, the, the demand is out there, so uh, okay. it's, it's, it's going to be out there. So, Well, another one you touched on was uh, the spectrum sharing issue with the Department of Defense and other government agencies that have, have spectrum. There's been, it seems like recently, some, uh, some comments about, the, I guess, uh, a willingness to share spectrum. Um, and that brings in a whole another set of issues as well too, with you know how they get shared and and who gets involved in that. Yeah. Um, I guess how is that how is that band and that spectrum coming along as well? And do you see that making some some good progress too? You know. Um that actually is, I think that we've been playing a lot in that space just because they've been talking about the technologies that we're always trying to find anyways that be yeah. able to use the spectrum more efficiently because the more you pack in, the better. Um, so when we're talking about sharing or how to use the spectrum, the biggest focus of ours is being weighing in, like I said, again, from the technical stand, technological standpoint, um, and especially in one that's coming up soon, which is the 1755 to 1780. And the yeah. reason why that's coming up soon is because what that will be paired with, the downlink and then the uplink, would be the um, 
would be the um, 2155 to 2180. So that's yes. the right. So those will be paired together, and the 2155 band is going to be um, is supposed to be auctioned by law by February 22nd, 2015. Yes. So in other words, so you have to have 1755 if they're going to be paired, and have to have that ready to be paired with it. Otherwise, people will. I mean, there's an economic viewpoint, which yeah. is. You may not have as as um, as large of bids. People won't be as willing to bid because they're going to have to then turn around and negotiate with the federal government if they're still sitting on this other swath. Yeah. Um, and then just the usability of that, you know, that band to be paired with the other. So we're really looking at 1755 right now to 1780 to be able to figure out what can be done, where federal users can be moved to, how much it'll cost. Um, just recently, DoD came out with a letter to FCC and NTIA saying that it would. It would cost about 3.5. This is where we think we're going to go to. Um, there are contentious issues with that where they would go to. I mean, there's always going to be. So it's it, there's a lot of moving parts, but um, but it's very interesting because the technologies are are, um, are advancing so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Making what we um, what we previously didn't think was possible, and how to use these bands and how to work with the other technologies, um, we may solve our own problem. With technology, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, that's a good point. No, you're right too. I mean, I, you know, I was talking to carriers, I and mean, obviously they're looking at a lot of LTE uh, advances there, which will allow them to aggregate spectrum together, uh, to use bigger blocks, use different bands, all all to serve customers. So yeah, you're right. The technology aspect of it is advancing quite rapidly, and uh, hopefully can can at least help alleviate some of these uh, perhaps uh, diverse bands that are coming on, on, on into, into play. Uh, for for auctions to make the, the spectrum uh, get out to the market quicker. So that's right. That's uh, right. Yeah. Well, and, and I mean, there's always been, you know, there's always, I mean, the, the original part of the national broadband plan was to get 500 megahertz of spectrum out there within 10 years. Um, that was, you know, five years ago now, four years ago now. Um, I guess the progress on that, I mean, you know, with, with 600 megahertz, that's about 120 megahertz of spectrum. With this uh, 1.7, 2.1, uh, that's another 50 there. Uh, you know. We're still seems like a bit away from that. I guess that 500 megahertz uh, ultimate goal. Uh, do you think that's a, a reachable goal within the time frame, or do you think that was maybe kind of a, a moonshot just to kind of get uh, get the process moving at a, at a at a quicker pace? Um, that's a good question. We do the math quite often ourselves, especially <laughs> because a number we're going to salivate. We're going to see, hey, where do we find this? Let's yeah, yeah. let's find this. Um, so. You know, one of the things that we can't do is we can't forget about some of the bands of spectrum that have alternative um, wireless technologies, um, you know, different that will be used for the um, the CMRS on, you know, the the, the 600 megahertz yep. as well as the other bands. So we've got the 3.5 gigahertz yep. band, and that's going to be um, largely used by small cell yep. technologies, which a lot of our members um, many, uh, develop, uh, deploy and develop and deploy. And then we also have the 500 meg gigahertz. Which would be for offloading Wi-Fi traffic. Um, so there's a lot of other bands and technologies. I, I know that you're primarily talking about, and so are people when they check, typically talking about licensed technologies sure. and advanced bands. But um, you know, if if you count the others, you know, we're close to getting there. I'm sure for purposes of accountability, the government will account for those in their math. <laughs> but but we also do as well because I think that there's so many wireless technologies and so many choices, it's just, yeah. it's great for consumers. Yeah, no, that's a good point, you're right, I probably shouldn't just uh, count on, on the on the license stuff, because you're right, the license spectrum has been a big push for that, uh, like you said, the 5 gigahertz band and the 3.5 3 for small size, you're right, there's, there's definitely a lot more spectrum coming out there um, that's that's helping carriers uh, offload offload stuff too, so that, yeah, you're right, that shouldn't be discounted, and that's definitely helping out the process too, it seems, uh, yeah. to get the, you know, get services up to consumers, so that's, you're right, that's, that's a good point too, so it does seem like, I guess, when you factor those in, that 500 megahertz is probably a, maybe a reachable goal to, to some extent. So maybe. Uh, yeah. So we'll see how that, that plays out too. Uh, well, and there's also you know the issue with, with the 1.6 spectrum. I mean, there's some stuff with interference with uh, some of the light squared spectrum and stuff too. So it does seem like there's still spectrum out there that can be used. It's just a matter of, uh, like you said earlier, kind of kind of getting the technology in place to to use that spectrum uh, uh, for for commercial services at this point. So true. So yeah. true. Well, I guess I guess maybe a final wrap up then. I mean, what's what's kind of your view over the next uh, you know six to twelve months on maybe some progress that might be made, or what TIA is looking at as, as being some of the issues that you guys are going to look to uh, to look to tackle over the next six to twelve months? 
Good question. Um, you know, there's always those statutory deadlines that you look, that you work towards. So we're going to obviously be weighing in on the um, the traditional, um, you know, the the big ticket items, which yeah. is broadcaster spectrum and things like that. But um, you know, there's also these little deadlines in the middle that hopefully things will happen in. So in August, to um, so the end of this month, the um, CISMAC, the um, NTIA is going to release their you know report. They're going to take the working groups, which were divided up by um, technologies and and various um, various subtopics, and they're going to come together with how to move forward on the 1755 because yeah. that's be something that needs to happen, of course. Um, you know, we hope for movement 3.5. Uh, that's that's kind of dangling out there without a deadline. So, and that seems to be able to be done pretty quickly. So we're actually hopeful yeah. for that one to be able to be done, as well as the five gigahertz. I mean, China did that in like two seconds. You know, yeah. granted, you know, it's easier, but you yeah. know, so that's another one. So these other those little things that we were talking about that can move in between and can be additive towards. Um, you know, a spectrum, no pun intended, you know, of, of technologies that can, you know, get our stuff out there. I think that, you know, a lot's going to happen within the next, and a lot of decisions are going to yeah. be made within the next six to 12 months on what to do for the next five to 10 years. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, and again, with, with, new, with, with Tom Wheeler coming in, I mean, he's, he's got a, quite a bit of a history with the wireless industry. Uh, it would be interesting to see what he kind of brings to the table and how quickly he brings uh, spectrum up there. I remember, you know, watching, going to a lot, of, a lot of the CTA shows when he was president there, and he was always, you know, all about spectrum. So I'm guessing he'll have a, a good, a unique point of view when it comes to getting uh, uh, some spectrum issues uh, uh, tackled. So uh, that should be that should be good to watch. And like you said, to the 3.5 and the, and the 5 gig space, uh, yeah, hopefully those don't get uh, uh, pushed aside uh, for some of these bigger issues that are coming up. Hopefully those those still remain on track, and then the FCC can kind of, once they're a full uh, a full body again, uh, can uh, can can move forward on those too. I agree completely. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, again, yeah, we definitely appreciate the info information today. And as this kind of moves along, I'm sure we'll touch base again on getting some more insight from TAA on, on how things are progressing uh, in, in the spectrum space. So, again, appreciate the time today. I hope so. This was great. Thank you so much. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay.